All right, before we start the video, as per usual, we've got our disclaimer. I live with two dogs, three cats, one lizard, two human beings, so there are bound to be noises, and if there are, I apologize in advance. All right, so today's video is going to be my best of 2022. Now, I would have preferred to have more than just books in this video, but I kind of just started keeping track of like other things than just books. So this one will mostly be about the best books that I consumed, but I might try and sprinkle in other story mediums and content and things like that. So right off the bat, we're just gonna start with the bracket that I made in a journal. It's a very ugly bracket, please don't judge me. There it is. So yes, yeah, so let's just start off by uh, going month by month. What were some of the favorite reads. So in the month of January, my favorite read was A Spindle Splintered. Thinking back on it, I did enjoy it. Yeah, it was fun. A Spindle Splintered was like a very fun retake on, was it Sleeping Beauty? Uh, and I remember like the the friend who had some kind of terminal illness and just the adventures that they went through the fucking prince. All I remember was that the prince was a total idiot and I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> So Spindle Splintered was a fun time. Then it was The Wolf and the Woodsman. That book, I, I do still very much enjoy it very much. And I do still very much enjoy it very much. Yes, how English of me, how very refined. Yeah, and I think The Wolf and the Woodsman put Ava Reed on my radar because I really like her writing and just the religious topics in it, they're great. I feel like religion is probably a big part of her writing just because, or her like the stories that she likes to tell because then I read Juniper and Thorn and same thing. It kind of had, I don't know if I'd say religious tones, but definitely like beliefs and what they lead people to do. In March, it was The Liar's Knot. Still absolutely fucking love it. I know some people really liked the first book and then tried to read the second book and didn't like it. And I am still very attached to it. I really love it. I can't wait for the third book. Labyrinth's Heart. I think it's coming out in like August. I have to wait a long time. <laughs> then April, yes, April, I discovered The Ninth Rain. The Ninth Rain was amazing and I am so happy that Lorena on Instagram told me to read them because I I kept putting them off. I was like, they sound amazing, but I don't know. I'm a little bit eh about it. What if I don't like them? I fucking love them fucking loved them. So then it was all three books that kept winning. So April, The Ninth Rain, in May, The Bitter Twins also took first place for the month. Then June took the, uh, was The Poison Song. So the whole trilogy made it up into my favorites and still very much is. July was Exit Strategy. July, I think, was kind of a rough month for ratings because Exit Strategy, I liked it, but I mean, Murderbot is the type of series or it's the type of books that like, I'll always enjoy. I will never really hate them. I'll never find any flaws with them, but they'll also not be something that's like groundbreakingly amazing. It's just, they're fun and they're easy and they're short and so human, ironically. <laughs> but yeah, I think Murderbot will always kind of be a comfort read. Then in August, yes, I had um, continued, I think I began rereading the Underland Chronicles in the beginning of the year, and, but I got absorbed in reading um, the Winnowing Flame trilogy. But then when I picked it up again, uh, yeah, the books took first place every time. August was Gregor and the Curse of the Warmbloods, which is the third book in the series. In September was Gregor and the Marks of Secret, which crushed my, sh my soul. And uh, it, yeah, it's fucking, oh my gosh. And then in October, there was the grand surprise of The Art of Prophecy. So much fun. I cannot wait for the next book. It's right there too. I had borrowed it from the library because I wasn't sure. I was like, well, I don't know. It wasn't on my radar before. I'm kind of cautious. Read it and loved it. The entire world in The Art of Prophecy is so interesting. I think what really got me the most was the settings, the forest that's made of giant blades of grass, an entire ocean of sand. Like it's, and the, the sand moves like an ocean. I was like, what the fuck? It sounds so cool. And the characters, the, I forget her name. How dare I forget her name? But the master, she can step on me any day. Sorry. <laughs> 
we're we're going into untraveled waters. In November was the last house on Needless Street. That book Listen, if you have been wondering whether you'll like it or not, you will like it. So many twists and turns. I, listen, I don't read a lot of horror and I don't read a lot of mysteries and thrillers. I'm not very well versed in, you know, predicting what's gonna happen next or whatever, but I genuinely thought that I was like, oh yeah, all right, I totally get what's going on. I did not get what was going on. And then again, I didn't get what was going on. And then finally at the end, I was like, oh my God, that's what was going on. <laughs> It is such a sad, devastating story, and you have multiple points of view and unreliable narrators, and it just, it worked so well, and I, I could totally see myself reading it again. It was amazing. And then the last book was the one in December. My winner for December was Gregor and the Code of Claw. Are we surprised? No, we're not. So then it was Who Won Where? It was Spindle Splintered versus The Wolf and the Woodsman. The Wolf and the Woodsman won. Then it was The Liar's Knot versus The Ninth Rain. That was a very difficult choice, but The Ninth Rain won. Then it was between The Bitter Twins and The Poison Song. I put that The Poison Song won, but upon retrospection, I think The Bitter Twins is better. All right, there was a slight interruption with Ryan uh, coming back from helping some friends with their kitchen, but I was talking about The Bitter Twins and The Poison Song and how The Poison Song, technically I said here that it won, but I think it would have to actually be The Bitter Twins just because the second book I remember a lot more than the third book as much as the third book hurt me deeply. Yeah, the second book just had a lot more intrigue, I guess. Yeah, we'll say it had a lot more intrigue. So I'm actually gonna put the Bitter Twins here. It's not gonna change the overall outcome, but I would choose the Bitter Twins to win that. Then it was between Exit Strategy and Gregor and the Curse of Warm Bloods. That was an easy choice. Gregor and the Curse of Warm Bloods won. Then it was the Marks of Secret and the Art of Prophecy. As much as I love the Art of Prophecy and it could have potentially won, Gregor and the Marks of Secret is just, nope, I, it couldn't, it had to, it was so much, it, oh, it hurt, it hurt me. <laughs> but the Art of Prophecy could have won against anything else. It probably would have won against, um, ooh, that's a good question. I could have thought about that. Would it have won against like anything else? No, probably against like the wolf and the woodsman or spindle splintered. Anyways, then it was November versus December, the last house on Needless Street and Gregor and the Coat of Claw. Again, this one was actually pretty difficult because the last house on Needless Street was amazing. And Gregor and the Coat of Claw was also amazing, but they were also two very different stories. And the Coat of Claw is the end of this amazing series that I absolutely love. So I just, it won. It had, it, I, you know, there was no if, ands, or buts. All right, and then we are in the semi-finalists, The Wolf and the Woodsman versus The Ninth Rain. The Ninth Rain won. Then it was Poison Song versus Gregor and the Curse of Warm Bloods, which technically would be the Bitter Twins versus Gregor and the Curse of Warm Bloods, but Curse of Warm Bloods was so intense. It was a plague and this boy trying to save his family, putting his life on the line, having to deal with different species hating each other and trying to kill each other and trying to get them to work together in a state of complete panic and decimation of an entire species. It, it, <laughs> oh, and there was so much loss and so many tears. So Gregor and the Curse of Warm Bloods won that one. Then this one was a little bit difficult because it was Gregor and the Marks of Secret versus Gregor and the Code of Claw. The Marks of Secret was intense. It was brutal. It was so sad. But Gregor and the Code of Claw had a lot more finality to it. So it just won simply for the fact that it was the last book and it tore my heart to shreds. So then we ended up with the three finalists because I made the, the, the bracket that I made ended up with three finalists. I made a different one for the for 2023. So it was the Ninth Rain versus Gregor and the Curse of the Warm Bloods versus Gregor and the Coat of Claw. And this was not easy, not easy at all, because the Ninth Rain was such a discovery for me in 2022 that I damn near put it there because I was like, well, it, it's not a reread because technically Gregor, the Gregor books are all rereads. I'm like, it's not fair to not give a new book a chance, even though I knew I loved Gregor already, but I hadn't reread the Underland Chronicles in years, like more than 10 years. So being able to rekindle a love 
of an old series. Just really, you know, I was like, I, I have to give them a chance. So The Ninth Rain kind of automatically got cancelled out because of the impact that the Underland books gave me. So then it was between Gregor and the Curse of the Warm Bloods and Gregor and the Coat of Claw, and it was kind of easy. It had to be the Coat of Claw. So my favorite book, my winner of 2022, was Gregor and the Code of Claw. It was amazing, and I highly recommend everyone to read the Underland Chronicles. Please read them. If you like Suzanne Collins, if you liked The Hunger Games, if you read them when they were really popular and the movies were coming out, just go back, read Suzanne Collins' debut. Please ignore the fact that it's a middle grade, okay? Just put that aside. If you're someone who's like, oh, middle grade, it's for kids, ignore that. Read them. I promise you, you will love them. And if you don't, then just whatever. It's fine. Everyone's entitled to their opinions. <laughs> Okay, but I do want to share some other content that I did consume, even though I didn't keep track of it. This will be very raw because I literally have nothing written down. These are just things that I remember watching, playing, doing in 2022 that was amazing to me. The first one is, I want to say that it was, that I really loved it and I did. I just am still bitter about the way that it was served, I guess. Okay, the point, it was season four of Stranger Things. Season four of Stranger Things was amazing in my opinion. It was great. I, oh God, Ryan and I cried so much. Um, but the only reason that it's probably not like one of my favorite, favorite things that I consumed in 2022 is because when season four was coming out, right, people, we all, I feel like, am I the only one? Maybe I am, but I feel like everyone knew it's the last season. It's the last one. This is the end. They're going to fight it through. They're going to make it. And then it ended in that such open way. And I was like, so it's not done. I was excited to have an ending. Something that I love, and I know not everyone agrees with me, and it's probably due to the fact that I do enjoy endings, is that I hate series that go on and on and on and on. Probably the only TV show that I enjoyed that has multiple seasons in it is Supernatural. Don't ask me why. I kept watching it. I just did. I watched all of it. But I like an ending. I like something to not keep dragging on because usually it loses its greatness. And I'm worried that Stranger Things will lose its greatness. But I did really love season four. Then there's Wednesday. Obviously, first season of Wednesday. Loved that. Did a whole video on it if you want to check that out because I, I thought it was a movie and then it was a show. And I was like, oh, I don't like shows. And then I watched it. I was like, oh my God, I love it. <laughs> It just, it had a really great balance between your typical um, young adult content and a very dark sense of humor that brought it into more of an adult realm. realm and I, I, don't, I really liked it. And the thing is too, is like Wednesday, the Adams Family is something that I find funny and cute. And a lot of people always tell me like, oh, your house, you must love the Adams Family. Like I really don't know much about it, but yeah, I watched like two movies of it, thought it was funny. I liked the whole aspect of like this goth family that essentially doesn't fit in because they're goth. But I think that the Wednesday show added an extra layer. And I don't know what layer that is, but it added something and I liked it. Oh yeah, we watched Chainsaw Man. It's still ongoing, but currently they are on a break and there are 12 episodes, I think? Maybe 10? 10, 10 or 12 episodes? Something like that. But I read the manga and I, I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was amazing or anything, but then watching the show, I know some people who read manga and watch anime are probably like, oh, the manga's always better. And I'm like, you know, maybe, but I personally really like it when anime animators bring a manga to life because then at that point I can hear the voice of the characters, the movements that they make, like I can actually see the transitions between the movements. And I also feel like when I read the manga I didn't quite catch on to some things that are definitely a lot easier to catch on to when you're watching it. Um, and personally I really like the animation. I think it's really cool. Ryan complains about some things that it does. It does like those 3D CGI things when it's, it's like a fight scene and he really hates it. Sometimes it bothers me but I think they did it really well. I really liked playing Witcher 2. Witcher 2 was a lot of fun. And also I was playing um, Horizon Zero Dawn. Also really enjoyed that. So two video games that I played on stream, um, which you can see them in the playlist. I didn't stream a lot of Horizon Zero Dawn because I was still on Twitch at that time. And then I was like, fuck, it, I'm just gonna keep it all in one place. But Horizon Zero Dawn was 
really fun and I need to get the the other expansion for it what, or not the expansion the next whatever the next one is because the one that I was playing was Zero Dawn but then there's another one I don't know what it is I have to look it up but yeah it's an amazing game I love the machines oh they were so cool and then Witcher 2 I just think was fun because I played Witcher 1 and Witcher 2 is a massive upgrade from the first game <laughs> If I have, it was so, oh my gosh, the first game is so bad. The second game is like a whole new world. And currently I'm playing Witcher 3, but I'm not finished with it. So I can't really say it was a favorite. And then finally, last thing I want to talk about, a few movies. We really did not watch a lot of movies in 2022. I don't think so anyways. Babe's having a dream. Okay, I think she's done dreaming. Um, <laughs> She's still twitching. It's so cute. Hold on. There she is. Look at her Twitch. We didn't watch a whole lot of movies in 2022, but there are two of note that I want to talk about. And it's mostly because, yeah, we really didn't watch almost anything until the end of the year. And so these two movies, we watched them, um, like one was one week and then the other one was the other week. And the first one was The Gentleman. I think this movie came out in 2020, but uh, it has Matthew McConaughey and the guy, I always forget his fucking name, but it was Jax in Sons of Anarchy. There's another actor, very famous, but I loved that movie. It was so good. It's like your, it's like a drug, uh, cartel? Not really. It's a marijuana emporium owned by a man, an American man in England, and he's basically trying to sell off his emporium because he wants to retire. But there's this whole like investigation going on. Uh, there's a reporter who's telling you the events that are happening and he's making it into a movie it, as he's talking. It was, it was just so good. It was gripping. It kept your attention every time. There wasn't a single moment that I was bored and all of it made sense, weirdly enough. So I absolutely loved it. And then there were like misleading moments. Like, you know how sometimes you have a narrator and they're probably in the movie and they start saying like, uh, I don't know, like, oh, they all walked in and then I started going guns blazing and I shot his face and it gets like really intense. And, he, and then another guy will be like, that's not how it happened. He's like, yeah, you're right. Okay, that's not how it happened. And then it plays the scene again in the real way that it happened. That movie did that sometimes and I loved it. And then the other movie that I really liked was Bullet Train, which I know came out in 2022. And it's with Brad Pitt. And there were a few other cameos. I don't know if I want to say what the cameos were because if you haven't watched the movie, I think that it made it that much more enjoyable when there's just this random cameo in there. I'm like, what the fuck? I wasn't expecting it. But Bullet Train is this guy who works for a company, I guess, and he, he does exclusively snatch and grab operations and he's being sent to this train to just grab a suitcase and go. Obviously, it doesn't end there. He ends up stuck on this train, constantly trying to get out, but never can. And there are two other guys in it that are fulfilling a delivery for this really big, um, what are they called? Uh, Cause it's set in Japan. So it's the mafia of Japan, Yakuza. There we go. They're doing an operate. They're like doing a delivery for this big Yaku Yakuza boss. And then Brad Pitt, whose code name is Ladybug in the movie, he, ends up getting tangled in it. It just, it's a fucking shit show. It's so exaggerated. It's so unrealistic with so many things, but it's so well played and the the CGI for it was amazing. The ridiculousness of it was hilarious. The, the comedy, and there was surprisingly a lot of tragedy too. Like there were moments I was like, no, no, don't take him. Um, so yeah, that was a really great movie too. Uh, and yeah, I think that's basically all of the amazing things, the amazing stories and mediums that I came across in 2022. There are, obviously there are so many other ones, but I wanted to highlight really my favorite of the favorites. If you haven't seen, played, or read them yet, I highly recommend them no matter what you prefer. And if you have, please talk in the comments, tell me about your experience with them. Just if you're gonna mention spoilers, make sure you like give enough space in the comment and warning. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thanks so much for hanging out. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.